Hey there, welcome to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be using an ingredient that I've not really used a lot before. It is potato flour. And today we're gonna to make some gluten-free potato biscuits. Now, truth be known, there's more rice flour in these than there is potato flour, but that potato flour is gonna help everything absorb. There's also a little bit of buttermilk, and in my case, I'm gonna use a substitute for that because I don't usually keep buttermilk. So they really could be rice flour biscuits or buttermilk biscuits, since both of those ingredients are in here too. In any case, I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So please consider hitting subscribe and let's get started. So if you're like me and not overly familiar with potato flour, this is what potato flour is. It is where they have taken whole peeled potatoes, they have cooked them, they have dried them, and then they grind them down into a powder. And that powder is really fine. It is beige in color, just like a potato would be. And it actually smells like potatoes. So you definitely know that's what this is made with. One of the things that it is great for is keeping some moisture in the baked products, which is why companies and bakers use this. So for this recipe, we are gonna need a third of a cup buttermilk. And as I just said, I don't usually keep buttermilk in the house. So this is an easy substitute for buttermilk. You wanna take a third of a cup of whatever milk you typically use. So I've just got 1% here. That's what I usually have in the house. If you typically use dairy-free, you could probably do it with that as well. To the milk, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of either vinegar or you could use lemon juice. So you wanna add it in there, stir it around to mix it. And then you wanna let this set for five to 10 minutes for that lemon juice or vinegar and milk to react with each other and kinda of sour the milk is what it's gonna do. So I'm gonna put this to the side, and while this sits, we'll put the rest of the recipe together. Okay, this recipe is super simple to put together. There's only a few ingredients, so my buttermilk should be ready to go that I just made. So now what you wanna do is turn your oven on to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and let it preheat. Our ingredients are probably everything you have already, except for the potato flour, possibly. So, you want half a cup of rice flour. I'm just using Bob's Red Mill today. You want a tablespoon of potato flour, and I will link below in to some affordable options for potato flour that you can get online. You wanna add half a teaspoon of baking soda. This is baking soda, not baking powder. And that's gonna react with our buttermilk. That's what that's gonna do. We're gonna add two teaspoons of white sugar. An eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And I think at this point, before I add the buttermilk, I'm gonna give everything a good mix, just to give it a head start. This recipe says it'll make 12 biscuits. That seems like a lot, so they must be really small. So once we get it mixed up, I'll try to get 12 out of it, and we'll see how small they end up coming out. Add our buttermilk. Mix everything together. Then you realize that I forgot to add an ingredient. The final ingredient is one tablespoon of melted butter. The original recipe called for margarine, which I don't usually have. So I'm using butter. You could probably use margarine just fine. And at that point you would have a dairy-free biscuit, especially if you used dairy-free milk. 
Now let's continue to mix it. Okay, so I've mixed this for a minute or two, and one thing I've noticed is as I'm mixing, it is definitely thickened up and the liquid has been absorbed by the rice flour and potato flour. So it says to make these, to take pieces of dough, put them on a sheet pan, and then flatten them slightly. So I'm gonna do this by hand. I may need to wet my hands to keep the dough from sticking to me. So we'll put them on the pan and flatten them out. Okay, here's my ungreased pan. Let's see how they come out. So it looks like I can roll them into a ball shape without too much sticking to my hand. So let's just keep doing that. Okay, so I got 11 little bitty biscuits out of this and they are tiny. They're like a tablespoon and a half, maybe two tablespoons of dough. So I'm gonna flatten them. And I did wet my fingers for this, just in case they decided to stick. Okay, everything's flattened out. They're probably about half an inch thick. So now I'm gonna bake them for 10 to 12 minutes and hopefully they will brown up a little bit and we'll give them a taste. Okay, so I've let these bake for 12 minutes because they weren't quite brown enough for me after 10. And I have to say, they look more like cookies than biscuits. And I'm gonna see if they're, I think they're sticking a little bit to the bottom. Now they're lifting up pretty good. So just take a spatula and loosen them up. So they've all been loosened up. So I'm gonna let them cool for just a moment and then we'll give them a taste. Okay, so here's the finished potato flour biscuits. First of all, they're itty bitty biscuits. So you probably have three or four of them really if you were having a regular biscuit. I think you could probably, the way they cooked, make them bigger if that's what you're looking for. So I put a little butter on one. Let's give it a taste. So I think taste-wise, they're pretty good. They are light and the crumb in the biscuit is good. There is a little bit of chew, which I would assume would be from that rice flour. So there's a little bit of a almost stickiness to it. They browned up nicely. The taste is good. I like that bottom half even more because I like that little bit of crisp underside. Yeah, as far as taste, they're totally worth making. Easy, 12 of them, so you can probably get through them. Not sold on the cookie shape of them. I don't know if you could pat it out maybe and then cut it with a biscuit cutter and that would make them look more like biscuits. I do think doubling the recipe would be a good option to make either more of them small or make larger biscuits. Overall, it's a good recipe. Not sure about the reheat yet, since we don't typically finish any kind of bread product on the day of, but we'll have to try that as well. In any case, thank you so much for watching, guys. Please leave me any comments below, and I hope to see you on the next video.